Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I am here at the International Space Station, and I have the uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis docked at the ISS. This is actually one of the default scenarios that comes with Orbiter, and I think it's actually just called Atlantis docked at ISS. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to deorbit and land the Space Shuttle. Now, i got to be perfectly honest with you guys, got to put out a disclaimer. I don't know how to do this. I have brought the space shuttle down from orbit, but I don't think I've ever actually, well actually I'm almost 100% certain that I've never landed it as part of my deorbit procedure. I have successfully landed the shuttle using one of the other scenarios that's like, you know, 20 kilometers away from the the runway and all you have to do is land it. I've done that. Now, it's not the case that getting the shuttle down is hard because you just deorbit like you do any other vessel. The challenge is that the shuttle doesn't have an angle of attack hold of any kind. So, it's all it's a, it's actually it's somewhat similar to landing the Delta Glider, the standard Delta Glider, but it's much harder because not only do you not have a angle of attack autopilot hold, but you also have a, a vessel that flies like a grocery cart. You know, I mean, this thing just has no lift hardly whatsoever. So we're going to give it a shot. I fully expect this will be a failure, but why not try, right? First thing I'm going to do is bring up Base Sync MFD. I'm going to target Cape Canaveral. And we're going to see that our closest approach to the base is four orbits from now, and that's 394 kilometers. That's pretty good. I'm pretty sure we have enough cross range that we could do that. Uh, you might even have enough cross range to do any of these, but it's actually more realistic. I Well, I don't know NASA's protocols, I'm, so I can't speak for NASA, but I would be shocked if I found out that the shuttle undocked from the space station on some ridiculous orbit where it's thousands of kilometers away from a close away from you know a natural pass over top of Cape Canaveral it's my guess it's my assumption that they plan their missions so that when they do the deorbit when they when they undock and deorbit they have a pass over top of Cape Canaveral that's relatively close I could be dead wrong. Somebody can correct me on that. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and warp time forward for starters to get at least to orbit four. And if I see something else come up down here that's better, I'm going to go with that. Because I would rather even have something closer to, you know, 150 kilometers or something. So I'm not seeing anything yet. But let me just go ahead and go around one more time and just see if something better comes up. That's 766. Let's go a little further. And there we go, 165, that's pretty good. So we saved, a, you know, almost 160 extra cross range just by going around a few more orbits. And it would be my assumption that, you know, again, NASA would plan their deorbits at such time, and, and maybe that's not the case, but it makes sense to me that that would be part of their planning. So we're, we're now coming around to the final orbit. We're just going to do the typical, you know, halfway thing. So here I am three quarters of an orbit away. I'm going to undock now, and that'll give me some time to get separation between uh, my, you know, the shuttle and the space station because I'm still going to still going to orbit around halfway 
And I'm not going to do any base alignment, obviously. I'm not going to burn to do any kind of base alignment. The Ohm's engines are really quite, you know, they just don't have much thrust for one thing. And for two, we can get that cross range just by coming down through the atmosphere without any problem. And I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut to close up the cargo bay, which is the uh, same thing as the docking, it's K. There's a whole procedure you can go through in the virtual cockpit where you uh, flip all these levers and do all this stuff to close it up, but I don't find that particularly interesting. Okay, we're getting around close to the halfway point. And we'll go with that. We're about there. So let's go retrograde. Now, something about the space shuttle. A lot of people may know this and may not know it. The Ohm's engines are at a 15 degree uh, tilt with regards to the center line of the shuttle. Not sure if I'm using all the correct verbiage there, but basically the engines, as you can see, they're tilted up. So what we actually need to do to get a correct, a, to get a burn that's correctly in line with the engines is we need to turn off retrograde. Translation, rotation. And we need to rotate the shuttle 15 degrees up so that that crosshair is right over the retrograde position. And you want to do this for all your burns. It's mostly important when you when you've already got yourself into a, a uh, when you've already aligned your plane with the ISS. Then it's really important to get that alignment correct because if you're not aligned, let's say you're in this position and you do your burn, then you're technically affecting your plane alignment because you're 15 degrees pit you're pitched off by 15 degrees so that can impact your aligned plane nevertheless we're pitched where we need to be so let's bring up orbit MFD no target projection ships fine distance we want above the surface and we'll switch the equatorial frame although it doesn't hardly matter for this case and we're gonna burn and it's gonna take a while because these engines are pretty lousy try to get a camera angle that's a little better. You can see that pitch on the engines. Going to use a little time warp. Now there's all kinds of target altitudes we could go for, 40 kilometers, 30 kilometers, zero. Um, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference as long as you get it down to, I would say, at least 40 kilometers. I don't know that it, between 40 and zero, I don't know that it actually makes any real difference, but we're going to go ahead and bring the PEA all the way to zero.
know, prograde. And we're gonna warp time ahead to entry interface. We're at 330 kilometers now. And the first thing we're gonna do when we get to entry interface is start working on our off base distance. And right now it's saying that we would need to be rolled the other direction, but we'll see if that changes here if we cross over a node before we get down to entry interface or not. And that looks like we still need to be negative, so. Translation, rotation. I'm gonna go ahead and roll over now. And I'm going to put in full up elevator trim. And I'm just going to go with a orientation, something like that, for now. And that's giving me the uh, cross range. You know, it's bringing down my uh, distance, which is one aspect of this that has to be done. This is the problem with the shuttle, it just does not hold that position at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm immediately going to bring my joystick over, because this is going to require, I think, quite a bit of input. And we're going to go turn rotation off. Attitude off. Rotation, attitude off. And right now I'm just pulling back on the joystick is, uh, well, it's, it's not all the way back, but it's mostly all the way back. I'm just trying to get as much angle of attack as I can. And the other problem with the standard space shuttle is like the Delta Glider, it oscillates a lot. You know, you have to constantly make adjustments. It doesn't hold very well. So I'm just going to do what I can to keep a constant vertical speed. Okay, the distance is basically where we need it to be, so I'm just going to start rolling out now. surface would be better at this point. Okay, I don't want to climb, so let's let go of some pressure on the back stick. And 
and we'll do a little more rolling. Okay, we're uh, off base is coming down, so we're where we need to be. I, I don't really need to worry about the base distance anymore. I'll just bank back and forth as needed just to make sure that I don't get way off base. More importantly here, I just want to watch my vertical speed. Now I believe I can actually skip base sync and switch over to aero brake. Let me go to 0 0.1 for a moment. Target Cape Canaveral. And go with that. Back to real time. And we can see with air brake, aero brake that we're not going to have any problem making it to the base. We've got plenty of energy to get there. So I just want to maintain a vertical speed, you know, taking me deeper into the atmosphere, but not too much. I don't have any temperature readings on the space shuttle, so I don't really know how to tell how well I'm doing other than to look outside occasionally and see how hot we appear to be. There is something Orbiter has called, actually I'd have to, I don't have the, the module enabled. Uh, it's a free stream temperature reading, but I honestly don't know how to use it. It gives you the... I don't think it gives you the... Like, it doesn't give you the temperature of the nose like the XR2 does. It apparently gives you the temperature of... Like, the pressure around the vessel or something. It's I don't know exactly what it's telling you, but it, I've never found it very useful. So I'm rolling a little bit to the left here to bring the vertical speed up a little bit, as in closer to zero. because I'm going down and once I reach much below 60 kilometers I'm gonna get you know a lot of heat I think the shuttle fleet and or shuttle ultra probably have better better shuttle systems. I, I don't know, I've never downloaded them.
but the default space shuttle is laying us is pretty bare bones. Yeah, I can't really use that view. It's too hard to see what I need to see. So let me bring up base sync again. Let me rotate or roll the other way, I guess, for a while. Yeah, now that this distance is coming down. Back to arrow break. Actually, I think I will bring up base sync in an external just to have it. Orbit direct. There, that's good. I'm going to add in a little bit of up pitch. already seeing a huge problem here. I am going to go way long unless I just force the nose of the shuttle way down into the atmosphere because I'm only a thousand five hundred kilometers out and I'm just not getting the deceleration that I need. I think in order to get like a really good smooth ride down through the atmosphere without getting the shuttle really hot would be that you'd have to maybe deorbit one full orbit early and maybe even an orbit and a half and just go all the way around the planet once if not once and a half because what's going to happen here is this I'm getting ridiculously hot and I'm going to be holding some pretty uncomfortable G's. Well, like I said at the outset, I have no idea how to do this. But seeing what I'm seeing here, I've got a better idea already to deorbit a whole orbit early. Instead of going halfway around, just do one full orbit. Because you've got the cross range, you don't have to worry about missing the base. And now we're burning up. but we're not going to be able to decelerate in time if we don't just really force this thing into the ground. Fifty-three G's, that's pretty uncomfortable.
and there's our target. How Not to Land the Space Shuttle by David Courtney. Lights loop. only 40 kilometers away so we might actually be able to get it near the runway that in and of itself would be a bit of a feat even if it was a totally ridiculous and un unrealistic re-entry ride to the atmosphere we completely burned up and killed everybody on board and if the temperature didn't get them then the g-force did anymore. can glide that far. I'm only at 16 kilometers and I've got apparently 140 kilometers to glide. I don't think I can glide that far. See how close we can get. And let me know in the comments if you care to see videos like this or not. If it's a total waste of your time or if you find watching my failures comical or interesting. I, for one, actually like watching Orbiter videos really almost no matter what goes on as long as the person doing the video is commentating or something I don't really necessarily like to watch some of those ridiculous videos that people do where they're 
just recording their screen and not saying anything and they're flipping the camera around every which way. I don't really like that, but... Yeah, 10 kilometers altitude. And we basically need a minus 20 degree pitch just to maintain uh, you know our, our horizontal speed so I don't think we're gonna make this I will do this again though but the next time I'm going to deorbit one full orbit ahead of time and see if just to see if that it gives me enough glide time to uh, come down through the atmosphere without having to cram the nose of the shuttle into the atmosphere. Yeah, you can see even with 15 degrees down pitch, we're still slowing down. And I'm losing altitude and there's absolutely no way I can glide another 100 kilometers. So we're just going to set it down on the ground. At the very least, maybe we can do a soft touchdown. Okay, I'm just going to decrease my pitch 20, 20 degrees so that I can get the flare that I need. Actually, I'm going to go 25 degrees. I need to speed up a little bit, I think. And at two kilometers, I'll put down the gear. You are clear to land. Two thousand five hundred. Okay, putting the gear down. Gear deployed. Now I'm going to see if I can bring my vertical speed to something that won't make me crash into the ground. I think that was too soon. Okay, watching my vertical speed, it's... I'm stalling. That's not gonna work. Uh, it's gonna be a hard hit. Eight meters a second. I'm totally stalled. This is a crash. 16, 17, I'm, I'm falling. Yeah, that's a crash. 20 meters a second or thereabout. Well, to say there's room for improvement is an understatement. So that's going to be it for that video. I'm going to try it again another time. Again, if you uh, found it somewhat interesting, let me know in the comments. Because um, if you don't want to see this, these types of just trial error flights, then I won't waste my time uploading them. And I will catch you next time.